Hi, I'm Susan O'Dell. Welcome to the Food All Kitchen. Measuring tools, very important in some recipes that you measure exactly to the specification, not so important in others. Let's have a look at the tools that you need to measure and then we'll talk a little bit about when it's really important versus when you can use your own estimation of what a good quantity means. First of all, for volume measurements, things like one cup, one half cup, one quarter cup, you need some cup measurements. This is great for flour or any kind of dry ingredients that you might be measuring. You also need some tablespoon and teaspoon measures. I like these sets that are all attached together so you never have trouble finding them. And it goes from one tablespoon, one teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, and even a quarter of a teaspoon. Have a couple of sets of these around if you do a lot of baking particularly because inevitably you're going to use the one quarter cup three times and you'll have to keep washing it. So it's a little convenient if you can have a couple of sets handy. Also for volume measurement for liquids, you need a jug or two. This is a four cup jug. I've got a two cup jug. I even have this cute little one that uh, measures tablespoons. So if you've just got a tablespoon of soy sauce, a little mirin, you can put it in here and pour it directly in your dish. You always want to use some kind of a jug when measuring liquids. It makes your life a lot easier and it's a different type of volume measurement than what we've used here in the cup. I love these OXO brand because you can actually look down and as you're pouring your liquid you can see the measurement on the inside of the jug. No more bending down and trying to look at the side to see how far up the liquid has come. Just makes it a little easier. Finally, for weight measurements, you really need to have a digital scale in your kitchen. It's more important, in fact, to have a scale here than it is in your bathroom. Mainly because if you have a recipe book and it calls for grams or ounces, there's no way to measure that with a volume measurer. You need a weight measure. You've got to have a scale. It's also really helpful if you're trying to minimize portion sizes or just sort things out and determine, okay, everybody gets four ounces of fish or six ounces of meat, whatever it might be. So have a scale in your kitchen. Have one that does both metric and ounces or avoir du poids is what our system in America is called. Uh, most, most of the rest of the world uses uh, metric so it's much more convenient to have one that does grams as well. Have one also that does what you call tear so if I have it on it's on zero now if I add a bowl I can hit this button that says tear and it reverts back to zero so when I go and add an ingredient to it I know that just that ingredient weighs oh six ounces. So let's just have a quick look at a couple of different foods that you might come across in recipes. Got some descriptions that may seem a little confusing and the proper way to measure those. First of all, let's look at flour. Whenever you measure flour, there's something called the dip and sweep method. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? You're gonna take, if it calls for a cup of flour, take your one cup measure, dip it in your flour bin, get it nice and full, and then scrape it off. You don't want to compress the flour down too much. You just want to scrape off the top, add it to your bowl, and you've got your cup of flour. Another ingredient that might be a little tricky on measuring if you haven't done it before is brown sugar. They always call for packed brown sugar. This is how you do it. I usually take, if it's calling for a half a cup, I usually take a smaller measurement. I scoop it up and you want to dump it in and then you pack it down. You want this nice and tight. This is completely opposite of what we just talked about with the flour where you don't want to pack it down tight. When you ask for packed brown sugar, which it almost always does, this is how you measure it. So get it nice and packed down until your measurement is completely full and then you've got your half cup. Just like making sandcastles. <laughs> Some recipes ask for you to add a pinch or a dash of something to your dish. A pinch or a dash is between, oh, a sixteenth and an eighth of a teaspoon. It's not a huge quantity, and that's why they don't give you a specific, a specific amount. So a pinch should be what you can hold between your thumb and forefinger, but of course everybody's pinch is going to be slightly different. Start with your pinch, start on the lesser side keep tasting your dish and decide for yourself if you want a little bit bigger pinch or a little bit smaller pinch. 
So all recipes call for quantities, that's why they call it a recipe. Some recipes though you're going to need to follow exactly. If you're making a sponge cake or a souffle, you're going to want to measure carefully and exactly, otherwise it might not come out the way that the recipe has intended it to come out. If you're making something though like a stir-fried rice or a, a tossed vegetable dish, you can probably use a little more culinary license. If you're using a recipe that you trust, like those on Foodell, start with the recipe recipe as written and then adjust accordingly based on what you like and don't like. So if you find a recipe that calls for say one shallot and you pick this up at the grocery store, is that one shallot or two? It just depends on how much you like shallots. <laughs> bon appétit!